Most importantly, it takes time. When I look at my life, I grew up around tables. Those conversations that happen around the table matter. Conversations in the cafeteria, conversations around my family table, conversations around the table in the church. And I'm realizing that not everybody has access to a table like that, or the experiences that they've had at the table have hurt them. So that's part of my belief is that I can create a space where people can have conversations like that that matter and be a part of that. What matters to me as a 27-year-old young man? Mm -hmm. What's the type of impact that I want to have? And really, a lot of the things that I talk about, a lot of the things that I say, they'll have biblical undertones because, you know, I grew up in the church. Like, my parents did. Like, that was their thing, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's was the thing that they instilled in me. But then you get older, and you have to figure out, you know, what it is that you want. Right. Once you get into that, like, after 20s, like, you really start to rethink and what i call and like what i'm doing currently is unlearning yeah because like everyone wants to learn 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 you you learn up until a certain point and then you kind of see the real world and then you unlearn what you've learned exactly that makes sense so. absolutely bro these are the conversations where i'm like yeah we can wrestle with an idea we can right. wrestle with a thought and to the point ultimately where we can come to that table and hopefully we leave differently right you know definitely and then that way we can go when we are functioning in the world when we are functioning at at at, at our shops or in our jobs mm -hmm. oh yeah there's some fruit that comes out of it you know like we can be the we can be a light essentially right. in one definitely. sense so that's beautiful honestly that you have like that, that you've created that because you're right like the table is where we're all built whether it be a lunch table whether it be your dining room table any table you, you 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 get there and you leave a certain way and you creating this is amazing because like not a lot of people are doing this not a lot of people are highlighting what's going on in portland so right for you to create something like the table is like amazing because there's so many beautiful things in portland we just get overlooked for certain things whether it be the riots or or the home of nike Most or whatever definitely. it may be there's so much more exactly like, we're the home of nike but also under armor headquarters is here adidas headquarters is here it's a beautiful city there are amazing photographers. There are tons of artists. There are people starting clothing brands, people right. putting some stores where, you know, we talk about Back to the Basket is as one of them mm -hmm. and these other stores that uh, that exist right now. To me, yeah, there's Oregon in and of itself, beautiful state, really unique, but Portland, the city mm -hmm. is so special. So, hey, Portland, man, we out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Jalen, how are you? How are you doing, man? Man, I'm cool, bro. I mean, like, you know, life is kind of a trip right now. Like, like with my family, we we struggled a lot to where we kind of came from the bottom, you know, and we're in a period of transition, and not a lot of people know what a transition feels like or, like, know when they're in that transition. So um, just kind of, like, self aware and seeing where that, you know, my 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 family started in a low place and then i personally have a goal to get them to a, a, a higher place so i'm just right in that middle area of like it's the transition you know yeah. and i feel it that's why i play the game cold like a dc winner singing birds don't come by my window i think that's one of the hard parts you know as you get older you are kind of recognizing the things that you've been through and then you now are in the place where it's like oh man i actually get a chance to try to bring change to right. my family right like right. there are things that were unhealthy and i want them to be healthy like how do i actually get to that point yeah. you know what i'm saying we were living here now i want to live here how do we actually get to that point and taking those steps to me like i think that's what's really inspiring me about you and the man that you are is you really not you know because that stuff's so much work it's yeah. like actual work. Like pressure. you really have exactly yeah. like actual pressure. You really have to grind. You really got to think differently in order to mm -hmm. to change the trajectory of your family. We're soldiers. Soldiers don't go to hell. So I'm oldest and only boy in my family. I have five little sisters. Um, Golly, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I have five little sisters. Uh, 
So me and my dad are the only men in the family, and it's like, my dad's got seven kids, so it's like he can only do so much, so I'm next up, and I had to be kind of like the, the man in the, 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 the father figure in a sense to my little sister with my mom, Joda, and uh, it's like, I, I, I personally took the responsibility because at the end of the day, they've been through so much and it's my that's my little sister you know like i don't i don't want to put her through right any more any more trauma and then with my mom she's been through so much in her life even with my grandparents and uh, her parents so like I, I feel like i have the the pressure in the best way really um because i want to save them you know the danger, yeah. isn't that right yeah. i want to better my life you know i don't want to be running around the street the funny part about it is my dad having like you know, a lot of responsibilities, a lot of kids. It's like, he was still always in our life. You know what I'm saying? And that's the beautiful thing about it. And like, that's why like, like my dad's my hero. Like that's like, Most that's, definitely, bro. that's the reason I, I, the person I am at the end of the day, like a lot of people don't realize, like nobody's seen my dad. A lot of people see my mom on social media and stuff, but like my dad is like from the South, like from Alabama moved here when he was 12. Like, so I was really raised on like, you gotta be a man. Like yeah. thrown in the pool as a kid, figure it out. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like swim or drown. For so, sure. So he 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 brought me up in that way, but then, you know, just through life, like life happens. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom, she went through a lot, man, like with with her parents and then it kinda trickled off down into to to her young adulthood and she had me at a fairly young age. Um so she was growing up while we were kind of growing up, right? So I kind of, like I said, had to be that adult for my or for my sister to where I had to hold it together. I had to hold everything together. If you hold and you get through the, to the other side, it gets better. So I've had this kind of vision recently of like, like life, right? So if you do like a black hole, yeah, it, it, it starts wide. There's a that there's universe, there's stars, everything, and then you go deep, and it gets narrow and narrow, and you don't know what's on the other side. A lot of people don't know what's on the other side of life, and if you stay in it, in it and you you get squeezed thin, you the pressure as you go through, right? That's in life. They talk about diamonds and making like all that types of pressure, right? So you going through this life, you start here as a kid, you're starting wide, you're starting big, bright eyed, and then life hits you and you get narrow anxiety depression family everything trauma death whatever you get narrow 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 and it gets real tough to where some people fold and just stop and just live in that small space to where as if you keep pushing every single day you keep you just take a step take one step right sometimes we don't have the emotional capacity or sometimes we're not as healthy from a physical sense or a spiritual sense or mm -hmm. a mental sense. And those things really begin to take a toll. 100%. And I think that's part of part of the idea of, even when I talk about like conversations that happen at the table is I think those things can, mm -hmm. those are the places where you get taught the healthy things. Those 100%. are the places where you right. have gotten, you know, poured into this idea of like, oh wow, like mm -hmm. I, I have to figure it out. Some people you know? don't have that table. And some people don't have that A lot of people, especially in this world nowadays, like with social media, everyone looks outward for things to where it's like, you don't realize if you create your joy and your peace and your love and everything you need inside of you, everything else will come. And that's what I've learned, especially through this journey of like social media, basketball. Yeah. It's just like, you don't have to force anything. If you feel stuck, take a step, do something, whatever it is. If you're stuck in a routine, save yourself, be your own superhero. And that's, and that's, and that's just by trying something. Yeah, man. Do. Just just do. And then something will come from that and that'll lead you to the next step. Depths of the man that I was from the start. Stay next to the fam. Got a place in my heart, chest, breath on demand. The rest of the plan got scrapped when I landed, invested in arts. A little quick tour, you know what I'm saying? The back room. So it's kind of like it's cool because we're growing out of this space. And that's always a good problem to have. But as you can see, there's just a lot of stuff just kind of everywhere. Big end goal. Yeah. We want a huge kind of like factory space. Like, remember Rob Deere, the Fantasy Factory? Of course, of course. So, so that type of vibe, right, to where it's like you show up and there's a full-size basketball court, trampoline, but then there's a shop too, right? 
So it's just kind of like one big space to where you can come have fun, you can come shop. For sure. And then we start an AAU team, run a basketball team out of there, camps, yeah. all that type of stuff, and kind of just like give back to the community and provide those resources and platform like with social media, right? Like you put one highlight, one kid on this, you know, on our platform and he goes and he gets a scholarship throughout or whatever, right? So we just want to build that platform and create that so that we can give kids eyes in a sense, you know, bro. especially bro. And like, it's hard to like, you know, kind of harp on it, but like the small city and small town that we're, we're in, right? There's, you see talent in certain places and, and you're like, oh, we're so, so big cities, right? I'm going to grab them. For sure. We're going to grab them. We're going to turn them into a whatever. Da, da, da. Out here, you get a talent in like, oh, yeah, that's just going to be, he going to go to the league maybe. Da, 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 whatever. You don't think nothing of it. But like I, I've grown up with people that are, are like God, like, you know, was one of the homies, God-given ability, like could have went pro in anything. And just we as a city – didn't groom him and there's nothing there's nothing that's not our fault we just don't have that yet and so we just want to be that for people you know what I'm saying? we want to we want to help people get to that next level yes, and sir. reach their full potential so i think it's mad funny bro because yeah, you let me you let me use the restroom yeah and there ain't no pull string yeah. but then so i turn this light on and i'm looking around and i see love yourself call your mama yeah, I like that. Life's sweet when you know the cause. A thousand yards there, I was looking sauce. Smokers call fashion and air. I'm not scared when we send them off. That's life, black plight. Can't get along, not alone. I think what's part of so special and unique about your story is you have gone through this spouts of homelessness mm -hmm. and you did have this pro inspiration these desires to go to the league or play overseas then now you find yourself in this place where you're in social media so to me it, it's so interesting to see how you've transitioned and and what has gone and, and gone through that process yeah i mean and it's crazy because like with the the homeless part about it like it's not like i was living on the streets you know what i mean um when you hear homeless that's kind of what you think right away but um it was just, you know, my family, we had friends, we had places to stay, but like there was points where we, we didn't have a home of ourselves. We had to stay with another family. We had to stay with this friend we had to stay. So we had to bounce around a little bit. And then there was at some points, I didn't know where the next meal was going to come. I didn't know if my lights were going to turn off. I didn't know if I could get a hot bath, hot shower, like boiling water on the on the on the stove to get clean you and know how, how old would you have been during this time i mean man like really like all the way up until like middle school like early high school like because it was like the so it was kind of it was weird because we we weren't we weren't terribly off but there was just certain points in life to where i i moved every two years of my life up until middle school yeah. every two years i lived in portland then eugene in Beaverton, then Eugene, then Portland, now back to Eugene. And now I'm in middle school. Yeah. So I don't even have a sense of like, 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 I, not not identity, but like, I don't have like, oh, where are you from? Like when, sure. I, when people ask me that, I'm just like, I, I naturally default into Portland, but like, you know, my high school years was in Beaverton, Hillsborough area, but like I lived in Eugene, but then I lived on MLK. For sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, I'm a little bit of everywhere and it's kind of like how, my life has been, honestly, because, like, my mom is from Eugene, Oregon, but my dad is from Alabama. Yeah. Like, I I have two completely opposite ends of the spectrum, and it's made me. And, like, that, it, it, and it's funny because I've had conversations with other <laughs> light-skinned guys, and just, like, you're the mix of, like, some people are like, oh, I feel like I can't relate, or I don't have an identity, or, like, I'm not black enough, or I'm not white enough. Right. I flip it, bro. Like I like I, I go, I know both sides of the world, so I can touch on anything. Most like, definitely. And and that comes down to life and perspective. And like, so so back to my story. I was gonna say, we didn't know where we were gonna stay. They we got a notice that you have thirty days to move to to get out of here. And my uh my family you know has some stuff in the past to where like it's it was harder for us to find places to live. And so. My mom bawling her eyes out every single day. Don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. And I'm like, just stay positive. Stay positive. I'm a kid. I don't even For know sure. what this means. You know what I'm saying? So 
um, stay positive, stay positive, and, you know, just trying to pick them up, lift them up at all times. And finally, on, like, it was, like, the second to last day of, like, we have to get out of here. Like, we're gone. We have no, like, we're making plans. So I'm going to go stay with my dad. My mom's going to go stay with a friend until we get to, you know what I'm saying? On the second to last day of us having to get out, we got into a place. We got approved. Then so now we're good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And that's and that's and that's that's what a lot of people miss, bro, is like that you see now one meme of the, the two diggers and they're digging towards the diamonds and yeah. the dude gives up right before he gets to the diamonds. Keep digging, keep going because you don't know when you're gonna break. You don't, or you don't know when the, the breakthrough is gonna happen. Sure. You might be one step, one conversation, one journey, one text, one person away from everything you've ever wanted. And in this day and age, bro. Your life can change overnight, literally. I think it's really cool to hear you talk with that passion because, you know, you're acknowledging where you where you grew up, right? Like your situation wasn't perfect, but you, you didn't allow that to define you. You didn't you don't allow allow that to be like the root of your identity is, oh, I was this, this and this is all my struggles. Mm -hmm. So I think what part of that is so cool is and something that I've always been drawn to is, you know, you, you have this perspective of joy and this happiness and this belief that you can get stuff done. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's really inspiring. Like I can imagine you were still hoping during all this time. Yeah. So I can imagine that's, that's largely the escape, you know, like when I, when I hear you talk about what hoops represented to you, what playing ball represented to you, that's where I see you put a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. That's where I see you get excitement. You know, we're, we're in this place called back to the basket that's rooted in basketball. Like, to me like that that's what's really unique about you yeah no i mean basketball was always my escape like it's just tough because like basketball was my escape right and through all that like basketball was what grounded grounded me what kept me like just keep going because that was the goal was to make it to the league you know what i'm saying like i i wanted to make it to set my family free and i thought like god gave me these abilities to do that right and then so when i get to a point of i'm 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 almost there like like i'm in the conversation with the pro guys that are from here like I'm I'm playing with these dudes like the Portland Pro Am like the first one ever was in 2015 and I'm playing with professionals like in the league and I'm holding my own I'm 30 point triple double like you know what I'm saying and like yeah it's just a pro am whatever but like when I'm fresh out of college and I only did a two year at, at a JUCO because I messed my grades up and that's kind of like a big thing too is like the conversation around school is kind of interesting nowadays because. You don't need a degree to do anything right, anymore. Right, you right. could pick up TikTok and that could be your I whole learn life. Right? I gotta learn on YouTube. Exactly. So like with but like, you know, back then my family was really pushing degree, degree, degree. And so the two years I did at a JUCO, state eligible, you know what I'm saying? Cool. And then in my final year, basketball was coming was 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 over and I had one semester left, right? So I moved home, you know, for that last semester, fail all my classes, it just didn't have just didn't care. I just, cause like basketball was the motivation. That's the only reason I'm doing this. Right. And so I go to try to tra uh, transfer to PSU. Um, and I'm going to open gyms and I'm, I'm, and I'm getting my foot in the door. I don't know anybody. Right. I'm from Beaverton Hillsborough. There's no, there's, you know what I'm saying? It's not just yes, to do when, exactly. Like when you're in Portland, it's the Portland Hoopers. Right. And so coming from Beaverton Hillsborough, it's like, Oh, you know, he's soft. And they have these like, you know, oh, these, for these, sure. These, preconceived these, notions exactly and so they think they they think it's sweet yeah in a sense, for sure. but it's like so bam i'm 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 making my way into these into these conversations into these gyms to where i get into a psu open gym during the summer right after you know my uh my two years at a juco and i go to the first one boom do my thing play my part whatever right and i go oh this is i can do this and so I get loose and I get confident in next open gym, busting it, you know what I'm saying, going crazy. Like they're like the starting seniors. Like they're they what they do is they put their five together, not PSU, I'm just saying college in general. They put their five together and then you play against yeah. their five, right? So I'm boom, 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 single handedly. And so the coach just happens to be there. Head coach happens to be there. 
And I'm, so I'm like, what's up, coach? Just, you know, staying tapped in. And he goes, yeah. He's like, cool. Let's, let's, let's get the process started. Let's get it going. Now I'm looking at you now, and you're the the head of Back to the Basket and doing the social media thing. And what is, how did you get all the way here? What does that look like now? Yeah, so I mean, like I I, I did it right. Like my my dream was the NBA, but like I ended up playing overseas. You know, I signed that dotted line. I made my dream come true, right? Um, and the transition is just it was interesting because basketball was my entire life. It was my identity, like. And a lot of people don't understand what it's like to give your life to something. And that's not a knock on anybody, but it's just like, imagine waking up every single day of your life and you work out and then you sleep and eat and you work out and you sleep. You're dedicating your physical and mental, the mental side of it of like, no, this is it and there's nothing else. And then it not working, it not panning out the way you think. And then now it's gone. I walked away from it, like you know, and like it was—it was just my time, right? I signed that dotted line, and what threw me is I didn't have the feeling of I made it. I had the feeling of I think this might be it. I, I don't have that. Like I want to go home. Like I'm in Europe. Like I'm ready to go home. I'm staying in a seven-bedroom mansion, and I'm like, it's time for me to exactly. Like I just didn't have that feeling, and so I was like, man, let me go home. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Had no idea hit depression hard, like, like still like working through it. Cause like, that's almost 30 years of my life dedicated to one thing and it didn't happen, it didn't work. So working through that and then finding a shop called, we used to be called Ball Was Life, right? And I grew up watching Ball Is Life. And so finding this store called Ball Was Life and meeting Troy, I, I something spoke to me and I said, hold on, Cause I met him through, you know, selling sneakers, whatever. He was like, I know you through basketball, right? We know mutual people. And he was like, actually, I'm opening up a store called Ball Was Life. I need some hoopers to come right after I'm getting done with my journey of basketball. So something's talking to me saying, it's time to transition, it's time to go. So, so I made that transition blindly, not knowing, right? Like take that step. I didn't know what this was. I just came in said, okay, boom. And then so he gave me the free reign to do whatever I want and, you know, just, became the guy and then right right well so then and the crazy part about it is we started the social media journey right and we were named ball was life ball is life hit us with a cease and desist because our name was too similar and it was like kind of threw us because we're only a year in and it's like dang like we're not even you know what i'm saying so we had to change the name to now where we're back to the basket but that's when our journey really started because like all of a sudden now we're posting on social media. We don't necessarily know what we're doing. We're just trying at like, I go, like how we're going back saying, just take that step. We're taking steps, taking steps. Boom, something hits, something goes viral. In my head, I'm very analytical. So I like, so I'm like, oh, this worked. This is what they want. Let's copy and paste that and just do it over and over and over again. And it worked. We posted seven times a day and to where now we're up to 160,000 followers in just a few months. And so, that consistency of of just keep going, keep trying, put your head down and just go. At the end of the day, put your head down and go. That's what a lot of people don't do. They just, they worry about what's going on here, what's going on there. But at the end of the day, lock in, lock in, take the steps you know you need to take. And then you'll eventually get there. You'll get what you want, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm here, man, and it's like, it's amazing. I never thought this would be a thing. I never thought being an influencer was in my life or in my, I've had the charisma or whatever, the personality for it and nobody, and it's funny because people told me that when they started seeing me crack on social media, like, oh, you, you have the perfect personality for this. And I'm like, damn, I never thought about that. You know what I'm saying? And so sure enough, you know, I, we're here and, you know, millions of views, hundreds of thousands of followers, subscribers, and it's been fun. It's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong, y'all, it's a lot of work, but, it's 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 worth it at the end of the day because we're, we're I've I have dreams to where I've never really said this out loud but like I want to change the world like you know what I'm saying I don't, I don't I don't want to just be here for a short time and you know get my money or whatever get the attention and thought like I I'm creating something to really change the world like I want everybody I want everybody have the opportunity to live in their gift because everyone has something and so. Uh, that's the goal, man, is 
change the world. Who's gonna stop me? Yeah, I need a piece of this about this one.